but also there are so many people who I think are funny comics in Canada that nobody will ever know their name because they're too scared to leave the confines on a communist country, you know? <laughs> oh, oops, sorry. It slipped. It slipped. Sorry, Johnny. Is that okay? It slipped. Welcome back everybody to episode number 31 of the Johnny Rogers Show. I'm so excited to have this guest on today. He is absolutely killing it right now. He's, you might have seen him on Kill Tony, um, uh, but please welcome the one who stutters, Jared Nathan. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Johnny. Thank you for having me. No problem, man. Good to have you on. I'm happy to see uh, that you're doing well. Our like our topic for today's episode was risk. You said that you wanted to talk about that for starters. Yeah, I think it's very important to like following your dreams and going to where you want to go. You have to take risk, you have to sacrifice things, you have to go to the uncomfortable to make things feel comfortable. Yeah, no, know? exactly, yeah. Or, or so, at least I do, yeah. So but let's, uh, for people who don't know, your risk that you were taking was you decided to leave the, oh, the thriving Toronto comedy scene at the time i mean everything was shut down like you could i see now yeah. that it's all back it seems like it's all back to normal now which is amazing and i'm so happy for everybody that gets to take advantage of that yeah. but you you <laughs> took a big risk and we're like i'm gonna go to another country right now and uh and try it and try it over in america what uh what yeah, made you want to make that leap i love doing comedy i love performing I want to make comedy more than a hobby. I want to take it to the next level. And you kind of have to leave Canada. You want to pursue anything in entertainment to the next level. And I got an opportunity through my connection with Jason Rouse to go in November to um, yeah to go in November to Austin, Texas, and through the answer stuff, my name got pulled for killed Tony and then you smashed it. <laughs> Yeah, and like, I just... It's just getting seen in front of the right people, right? Like, we always knew that you were such a killer. Like, I, I, I loved seeing, like, how excited the rest of the comedy scene was. Seeing, like, all of the clips of uh, you on the show. Because, like, yeah. usually... I, w I don't want to say usually, but maybe historically, when some other comedians get a lot of success or get a lot of heat on them, people are like, oh, how'd they get that? Or what'd they do? But it's exactly what you're saying. It's risk. You you decided to take the risk, and you got the yeah. reward, man. And you were ready for it, too, right? That, that's the thing. Is like, you were already a great comedian. Like, I remember the first time I saw you at uh, Underground, I think it was. And I was like... Yeah. Oh, damn, he's like, you were like using the stutter to like hit a better punchline. Like it was like incorporated into your joke. Like I could tell that you were like, yeah. you masterfully like incorporated it into the joke. And I just thought that was fucking incredible to see, man. So I'm, Thank yeah, you. again, I'm stoked yeah, that you're, you're killing it in Texas right now. Yeah, I also, I tell people it's 50 to 10 manifestation and, and energy and like knowing having the it's not so much covenant it's more than 
covenant. It's like, I want this. I'm like, mm -hmm. it's an obsession. Yeah, pretty much it's an obsession. And it's also who you know and who. Yeah, you have to also be cool. <laughs> yeah, and like, like fun to be, like to nice to be around. Cool. You know what I mean? Like you can't really you get that far if you're a piece of shit. Zone, you know? Yeah, of course, of course. These stepping stones, and also. What's your What's your uh, next I thing? What's the next thing you want to do? Pardon? What's the next thing you want to do? I want to open for Joe Rogan. Damn! There you go. Manifest. Uh, that, dude. <laughs> you just put it. You just put it. I up, don't man. want to like. I don't want to like. What I, I don't want to like. I'm close. Like I'm in this. What you should do actually is go after Joe Rogan. <laughs> Whatever, yeah, man. <laughs> I think that would be the better challenge is like let him I go up and then come on after and yeah, kill man. kill just... kill twice as hard. <laughs> right. Yeah. I just wanna like man, I never thought I would be in the same room as Tony Hinchcliffe. I never thought I'd be in the same room as like Brian Red Band, like, I was in the same room with Joe Rogan the other night and stuff. I'm like, the, the people I watch on my computer are now my cohorts. And like, it's all because I took the rest the first time, got on a plane. Man, they asked me to say this. Yeah, your mom, time I, your mom was pissed, apparently. <laughs> yeah, my mom is still not very happy about this, but. Is she yeah. still not happy? But she still hasn't uh, got fully on board? It's a lot of financial. It's a lot of like. Of course, yeah, it's a big not investment. Cheap, to, but yeah, I got yeah. the whole dim story. So, like, my mom is happy. I'm following a dream and shit and stuff. I'm like. But I still, I still don't know how to express it all. It's still like, it's not, man, like I, yeah, just, I don't want to, yeah, it's, it's, but also, there are so many people who I think are funny comics in Canada that nobody will ever know their name because they're too scared to leave their confines in a communist country, you know? <laughs> oh, oops, sorry. It slipped. It slipped. Sorry, Johnny. Is that okay? It slipped. But yeah. You have the um, greatest element of surprise. <laughs> you know, that's what I do. Um... <laughs> yeah, it, it's, oh, yeah, it's a lot of people are scared to it's rough. leave their comfortable. I don't like I, I, I think some people are definitely scared or it's like uh, they have other you know reasons. Maybe it's like they don't want to leave family or it's like they don't have the money or whatever justification that they right. want. Right. But I think there's also an element of like wanting to build it here. Like, I think a, a, the best thing that a lot of not everybody should do this, right? This is just my opinion. But I think the best thing would be to like, yes, get big in another country, like even uh, like a ton of people go over to England, for example, and then try right. to make a name for themselves there. Yeah. Um, but the point is like, come back, you know, come back and also come back to your home community and invest with this new oh. like, you know, new um, status, new connections, and new uh, whatever to bring more opportunity yeah. for those people that are here. It's it's the problem happens when people just like take off and stay there. But I get that. I totally get that too. You're like, why would I help? You know, random other people. But it's uh, it's about keeping right. the scene that started you alive, almost. You know. No, I understand. I understand that. I think it's also respecting the. People who put you on more than the scene itself. Sure, yeah, of course, of course. Cause like, 
I always have love for like Mike Vita. Like I will always have respect and love Mike Vita because he was one of the first people that Mike Vita is someone who needs to go to the US. Ten dollar yeah. bill. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Like yeah. And like I will always respect that. And like I will always try to help people who help me more than helping the scene itself. Cause I think that's more important. That's just my take. No, no, for on sure it. I get that. So, yeah, and also, and uh, I don't want to be on. I don't want to be only known for being on TBC. You know, <laughs> I don't want to be only known for being on yeah. government television. Yeah, yeah like yeah. I want. You imagine you were like, uh, what's that? What's that Russian like propaganda channel? Oh, be, RT. Uh, R- RT. <laughs> yeah, it'd be funny if like one of your credits were RT. <laughs> yeah. like, like, As a comedian, you're like, huh? <laughs> yeah. It's like uh, that kind of, you know? Yeah, it's kind like of like RT. That. It's like if RT had a, a comedy section. Yeah. Uh, Russian uh, comedians yeah. are, are putting it on their posters. <laughs> yeah. But like I love, yeah. Like I uh, it's a higher the calling. I have a higher mm-hmm. comedy is higher to me. It's like a higher frequency. Like I'm on a higher frequency than just staying in Toronto and like. Oh, I get that. Yeah, yeah. You want to? There's something cool too about like doing comedy in like a, a brand new city where nobody's yeah. ever even seen you before yeah. and let alone knows your material there's just like something it almost feels like you have a superpower not to like you know like coming into a space where you know you have like these jokes lined up that you've been working on for years right like this isn't like amateur stuff and then right. you go in front of these people who have never seen you before and even if you do moderately well it's still like a, a like a oh shit because most people just expect like uh, who is this person they just you know they maybe write you off right away yeah yeah i enjoy- that's how i fell in november now that's how you fell in november and i really have to write new it's like i have like you got you got to come with them with new material now that, um, now i'm trying to do a whole Because I'm finding now I'm having more problems with my older stuff. I started way more now on my older stuff than I, I do on my new stuff. I don't like it's just something I have to. So I'm in a process of like. That would be a, in and yo, That would be a funny it. joke though to say to the crowd like, "Hey, if I stuttering, if I start stuttering more, then you know I'm doing old shit." Like. <laughs> You're like, down. you're like all my new stuff all my new stuff comes out clean so if you hear me study stuttering a lot you know i'm doing some old <laughs> old material <laughs> uh, maybe you could do it like in a joke about getting a speech therapist or something <laughs> see see ladies and gentlemen this is what it takes uh for this sort of a craft you literally you're watching a real Don't comedian come from anywhere man shows come of conversations you know you always write it down. You? you always write it down because always. Mitch Hemberg even has that joke or had that joke, I should say, where he was like, uh, sometimes if I have like a funny idea and, and I don't have a pen and paper nearby, I have to convince myself that it wasn't that funny. If we don't write somebody down sometimes, you, sh- you kind of slap yourself. You're like, oh crap, like that was a that was a goose, you know, that's a goose that, like I lost that idea. Yeah, you know? Yeah. There's so many yeah. of those ideas too where like like Amazon or Netflix happens or Uber happens and someone is like, I had that idea four years ago. It's like, well, you didn't do anything yeah. with it. <laughs> Maybe that yeah, idea cool. went out to like five thousand people on the planet and it just who's gonna do it? That's all that happens. Right. I hear jokes all the time from 
in the comics. I'm like, why didn't I think of that? Oh, that's I love that. that. Perfectly. What? I love that. I it's said. Stuff like that. Or sometimes people take a premise that I handle, I deal with on a daily basis, and they say it doesn't make fun of people with disabilities or whatever, or they call themselves the R word and stuff like that, or they call themselves stupid, which, yeah, I don't really. I think people are trying to appropriate my culture <laughs> by calling themselves. I don't know what it's like. I don't have that view, but yes. I don't know what it's like. Yeah, I was just saying, like, you should just be like, you, you don't want this life. Like, you don't know what this is. You, don't you want, can't no. handle the R word. <laughs> you know. You know, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, my so, like, God, dude. Yeah, Johnny, I, I'm taking you places. I take people to places they don't know they want to go, you know? That's why I wanted to have you on the podcast, too. I was talking to Alex Provedani, and he was just mentioning how, like, more people need to put Jared Nathan on because you've been, and I have been watching you, like, just yeah. killing it over there. So I, that's why I reached out because I'm like, I know this is going to be a so good podcast. That's funny, man. I know it's going to be a good podcast. Yeah, man. People who told me they won't put me on shows in Toronto are now um, <laughs> Well, if you have my show, I'm like, how much are you going to pay me, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, seriously. Like, no, you need to I'm do like it, yeah. the snakiest thing about, about being. What you need to do is, like, get, a, yeah. I don't know, a, somebody who is, like, has a good heart and good interest in your business affairs to manage you and then set a rate for you, basically. Same as Cameo, it's all dude. the time, all the time. All it's the Cameo, time. but in real life. <laughs> this is my rate. All the time. That's, that's, yeah, but, yeah. And, like, I don't think I've seen this. I don't think I'm, like... I'm still like at the. You're still grinding it bottom out. Bottom comedy, yeah. you know. Yeah. I'm not even there yet. I'm just at the yeah. table. I'm yeah. Yeah. Now is now I'm, is not the time to rest yeah. on your laurels. Yeah, you should go for right. it even harder. Yeah. I'm just at the high chair up to the table. I'm still in the high chair. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sitting at that table. I'm whipping your shit at everybody. You know, like, <laughs> what? Whipping your shit at everybody. Yeah, you know, I'm just still trying to get people to know my name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and like, I guess stops places in Texas at the airport. At the airport. I took my luggage off the compare belt and stuff I turned. What a humble man doesn't even have an assistant hey, to do this. Are you fucking kill Tony? I'm like, yeah. Like all that, it's 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 craziness. It, it's it's and I have to like take it in. I say thank you. I accept it. I say thank thank you. But it's craziness. It's like it's gonna get crazier, it, man. Yeah. <laughs> you guys gotta keep your head on your shoulders and just keep writing jokes. Right and like. It's hard. I can't suck my own dick. Well, you so could if you, if, you, if you really want to. You could, man. But <laughs> I could. So, like, it's not good for up here, you know? No, 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 no. It's not good for up here. It's, it's, it's not good for the lower rib cage either. All that bending right. is going to be there. I'm not that <laughs> flexible, right? No, no. So, like, honestly, it's, it's yeah, it's. I'm still the same chair on the block, you know, <laughs> so to speak. Little hip hop, little hip hop <laughs> reference. Yeah, yeah, chair from the block, nice. Yeah, you should. Uh, oh, yeah, you should start putting out rap songs now, also. Yeah, it's, 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 it's the thing is, I still I have to focus on one lane. 
I get you. Yeah. Right yeah. now, and like I have opportunity to do, to do rap and stuff, and like I've been trying to, I've been holding it off a tiny bit because like I need my focus on, on comedy and mainly on the sixty seconds. Like Kill Tony is is like. Especially it's green, good, man. good exposure, dude. And if you bring it every time and it's in front of different guests. And it's the hardest thing I ever did. That's dude. A, I never really get nervous before shows. So, man, I was like, I'm nervous rap on Mondays. Dude, it's just like, like that. I think it's it's that time frame, right? Like, you, to be funny within a minute, you're you're just trying to... You're like, let me get it. Let me get to it. You know, give me a second to to fire out a few. Let alone be funny in under yeah. a minute. <laughs> so it's, but I mean, it's, what a better like. Could, there couldn't be a better challenge for you, right? Like that's only gonna make if you do a five oh. minute set or a seven minute set. It's gonna be ridiculous. No, oh, and like I have the added challenge that most people don't have. <laughs> yeah, it's that like it takes me like five seconds to warm up on stage usually. It takes me like the first joke, like the first joke to really let loose. So the other thing, so like, man, that's why I'm here for it. Though. That's why I came to Texas. I didn't come to Texas for anything else. I didn't come back the sec- I came back the second time to do 60 seconds. How often, how many days a week are you wearing the full getup, like cowboy hat, cowboy boots, a, a whole harness around your that waist? That was a one-time thing. Do you say howdy, y'all, when you walk into places? <laughs> no, nah, man. I'm going like to go to, um, to uh, wanna get myself a... You get a gun soon, you know? No, you gonna get a gun? No, 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 I'm just joking. <laughs> Whatever. I'm just joking. But like, oh man, I uh, I have a cowboy hat. Look at this room. Uh, Jesus. Sorry, just... man. I gave you my cowboy hat. <laughs> yeah, part I have a cowboy hat. Nice. Now this is uh, officially, now we know it's from Texas. <laughs> you know. Amazon, but Texas. Amazon, but came to Texas. Amazon in Texas. But no, but, um, yeah, man. But, um, yeah, man, I love the Austin culture. The, the, the thing about Austin is everybody's from everybody, everywhere else. Mm, so it, There's it, only a few people that are actually from Austin. Wow. Like, it comes they must think it's crazy team. then, right? Yeah. Like people like, from there are probably like, Jesus, look at all these people coming in, like just moving into our... Yeah. It's Hollywood for comedy, man. It's a Hollywood b- b- boom in comedy. And like some people have experience, some people don't have experience. S- some people are g- g- good and sh- should make the journey. And some people will be open micers. Mm-hmm. Is there a big open mic scene there because of all the comics that flooded there? It's a huge open mic scene. Yeah. There's yeah. like four to five open mics almost every night. That's amazing, dude. So you can definitely get up lots. It's crazy how you much like just a few of those like big stand up guys moving into one place. It's crazy how much that affects Rogan, man. Rogan. the culture. But like literally to, to go there and maybe before that, there might not have been five mics a night, you know what I mean? But with all those people coming there, they now have to create those opportunities for themselves. Yeah. It's wild. And then uh, Cap City Comedy Club is going to open. Rogan Club is going to open soon. So like, they're, yeah. There'll be opportunities up there, and like, yeah, and like, I, I do a few open mics. I, I'm tr- right now. It's hard for me to go open mics because there's a lot of noise in the air. Mm. 
so to speak. And I just, yeah, I just, I'm trying to say this step and but like, tell us, see if the comedy community is huge. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know how the Toronto comedy scene is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is it the exact same like, there? Yeah. Oh. Like, there are people that, uh, that are genuinely happy for me. And there's also people who like, how come I return made it and I didn't? Mm. How come he has the opportunity and I didn't? Like, that is there. And like... That is so like... Uh... It's, 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 it's just annoying. It's You're just like, go away. <laughs> I will always have that everywhere I go. Yeah. Any, you... And the career I do, I will always have that. Because, man, I have to work harder than you. I have to put my whole, I have to put, my, I have to put everything into it. I have to. Mm -hmm. I don't have and a choice. I have to be smarter and faster than everybody. Like, because you're really, working at a I'm, disadvantage from the get-go, right? right? So that's why right. it creates right. that extra I have effort. that hump in this. I have that, like... Yeah, yeah. I have that... The, I'm like, rooting. I have that root in this, you know? Those 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 people are such a, an issue, like, just... I. I I feel so bad for people that like live life through that lens because like you're not, so many people like that, you're not doing yourself any favors though by just like sitting around. It's the same thing like when somebody gets like a big opportunity, it's the same people that are like, how'd you get that? <laughs> not like, hey, congrats, like very excited for you. Like you're going to be great right. at that, you know, putting out like positive energy into the universe. Just They're just like, how'd you get that? Like, yeah, oh, get out of here. I get the same stereotypes that the pop wand. The, <laughs> like, do they think I have to do something just to get who I am? They, do you think there has to be arterial things from other people? Like, also, I respect, okay, there's some comics every time they Follow me, even though I haven't said the R word in my set, they will call me the R word. Oh, here's the retard. Like, they might be joking, but still, it's like putting a hat on a hat. I don't know, always, I do drop the R word sometimes on my set, but I'm trying to stay away. I'm trying to. I'm trying to evolve right now. Mm -hmm. And if I do say the R word, I'm trying to swerve it so you're not expecting me to say it, so to speak. Yeah, like, I get you. You're going to do it like in a smarter way, at least. Yes, I have to be. Not using it like as a lazy, like, like, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. It has to have some purpose to it. Right. And also, I've seen. Black comics. Here's the thing: it's hard to make a R word into a punchline. It's not as easier as like <laughs> I'm trying to be. I'm trying not to say some of the things right now. <laughs> you like, should do it the same way that black comics use the N word as a punchline. I thought about it. I thought <laughs> about it. You should use. Now. You should use the R word oh, as, your, the as the exclamation point. Like, <laughs> I thought about it. I thought about it. No, you have to do it like this. Okay, deliver it, right? Deliver the yeah. the, the setup, everything, and then hit the punchline, but don't hit it in such like a, the joke is done sort of way. 
hit it, it's going to be funny because of the way it's written. And then yeah. turn kind of like in a sassy way and look directly at someone in the front row and then just say the R word at them. Retard, yeah. To them, yeah, like I you're have... saying, like you're calling them that. You know what I mean? Like, to yeah. do the punchline yeah, and I'll have... turn to them and say, because <laughs> I think that would, that like that, that little movement there would probably kill. I don't know, just in my head. <laughs> oh, it's something that popped in my head right now too, so. <laughs> He's writing it down. I'm gonna I'm gonna vamp a little bit here. Yo man. No, but like I always take a lot of comics don't like taking suggestions but other comics. I mm. welcome it because I love giving feedback to comics too. We're new too. Like my it's also like we give a comic of feedback. One of my favorites. It, I love it. There's such like if we're gonna be coworkers in this, like your material is your material and my material is my material. We can't really do each other's jokes. So what's the harm in like yeah. offering advice or like being right. like, oh, it, you know, this is something I would envision. Cause there's some times where I'd write a joke, but I'm like, I can't see myself saying this joke. Like I can right. only see like this person saying it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Like, so like, I was, I was raised to like help people. I was like, I grew up with that virtue of like helping people and like, you help me, I help you. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. And I think that's awesome. I don't want to say in the generation, because I'm not that old, <laughs> but like in this culture right now, in the culture right now, I think it's, Lost. And also, people can't be genuine anymore. People yeah. are so wishy washy fake. Say it's something. It's all about picking signs. You know, right. And like, people don't. It's getting cool now to not give a shit, which is not cool. Yeah. It's a trend. Oh, I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. Well, man, like, there's I certain... said this exact same thing a few years ago, and I, I couldn't agree more, man. Like, it, I, that, I noticed this, too. Like, it's they made it cool to, like, not care about anything. You're like, that. No. we need to have some values. <laughs> you need value, then you need boundaries. You need order, man. That's one thing that Jason Rouse taught me you need order you need you need structure you need social structure you mm -hmm. need like also i learned something also sometimes being an asshole will give you more respect from other people but, but, but I was an asshole because those people were very, were not street smart. So I have to like, I'm from Toronto. I'm from the screw face capital, you know? I'm from the kind of- What'd you do, Jared? Guy. What'd you do? What? <laughs> what'd you do, Jared? <laughs> I said, what'd you do? No, I'm just, I didn't go with that. So like in Toronto, to a certain code, if you grew up in a certain era, like I did, you know, like there's a certain, you know, like drug dealers to not sell drugs because I have to. Well, and they saw me walking to them, you know, mm -hmm, like certain mm -hmm. things I was taught by osmosis and stuff, where a lot of people are now don't know that, like, you know? Yeah, the, the, the idea of street smarts is gone, and especially if you keep people out, like, 
prevent people from going outside, like prevent people from like going into those social environments. They're never going to build those instincts like to right. stay away from dangerous situations once right. they're outside. Bad people don't just go away when you suddenly lock everybody up for no. two years. Like they're going to come also, back in and they're going to be scamming yeah. people. If you have street smarts, you won't get... You, you, you know when to stay out of trouble and stuff. And I learn mm -hmm. that every day. You know, but also my, I've been around PhDs and like mm, mm, master students and like professionals and like they're stupid. <laughs> like they don't know social cues. They don't know like certain interactions you shouldn't do, like, you know? <laughs> name an example, yeah. dude. <laughs> I need a story Murder? here. I said, name an example. I need a story here. Like, okay. Is it a little bit of a stretch? <laughs> that, like, I worked at a school, as a teaching assistant, and like, okay, that's not really street smart. So like, it's another thing how to stupid, okay? You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, there, she always called, the students cute. Oh, you're so cute. You're so cute. You're so cute. Right? And this young adult with Down syndrome who has been called cute all his life called her cute. And she she couldn't understand why he called her cute. He's like, you can't call me cute. You can't do this. You can't do that. I'm like, I'm, I'm like, you're exploiting kids by calling them cute. However, you can't take the same thing back to you. Right? Yeah. No, yeah. Just, that opens somebody's hand door, walk them ahead, or how they conversation. You're like this bitch. <laughs> she's yeah, she's so directly she's contradicting talking. herself. So, going back to like risk, you know, it's kind of like the board game or the con. Pardon? I, the board game? No, our topic, you know. <laughs> no, um, so the board, I love that board game. But, yo, is it cool we talk like five more? And... Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I know you got to get, get out of here to get to a show. Just... Yeah, of do course. Do like, get ready? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah for um, sure. So, like, man, a lot of people can take it. No, a lot of people can dish it out, but they can't take it. And that's the same thing about like taking chances. A lot of people can talk about it, but like when it comes time to actually do it, they chicken out. And like I have people in Toronto who tell me, "Yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming." And then every time I bring up to them, it's like. One excuse or another excuse or this excuse, that excuse. I'm like, You're like I'm here, so I'm here. I <laughs> want it. And I I'm want you saying, to be here with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I want. I would love people to come with me. I would yeah, love like come here. It's great. <laughs> I, want, I want them to come. I want yeah, to yeah. get kick ass. And like, also, man, it's like I don't know. 
if I wanted more of them, I'm sure they wanted like. Everyone's at different too. stages of the life, of too, right? Yeah, like I have no choice right now. <laughs> like I'm I literally no, stranded here. <laughs> you know, like I have a choice, but like. But I you have should no stay. Choice, yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Yeah. Like I have, you know, we always have a choice. Uh, uh, like I'm here for a reason, you know? No, hundred you know, like, percent. Yeah, I'm like I also gotta shout out the Underground Comedy Club. I can't do interview with Johnny Rogers and not shout out the Underground Comedy Club. <laughs> With I with Puff, Puff Mamas, Puff Mamas Club. Mamas so, Club, man, like sh- there's so many influences of the Toronto scene, and she's definitely the one greatest. of them. Like, yeah. people out here show her, people out here respect her, like Tony Hinchcliffe, like R- Red Band. Oh yeah, they respect I- her. I, I remember when I I remember when I ran into Red Band at uh, the comedy store when I was there in 2019 I think it was, and I brought up like hey I don't know if you remember me like I, I met you at uh, the underground he knew immediately like right away he yeah. was like oh yeah, yeah yeah like Puff Mama like the with the weed lounge he, like, he loved it loved it yeah yeah, yeah. so I was like oh that's and cool also, that's cool it- yeah Red Band also brought up the Corner to myself. You know what oh, I'm no way. Corner comedy, yeah. So, Redman had not a lot for Toronto. And yeah. It's good to see, man. It's good to see. Yeah. Um, I know you got to get out of here, so I'm just going to plug all your stuff for people. If you're watching on YouTube, go check out Jared Nathan Comedy on YouTube as well. Um, on Instagram, it's at one underscore who underscore stutters. All the links are in the description below. Also, go donate to the GoFundMe so that Jared can keep uh, chasing his dream out there in Texas. And uh, there's also a link tree that's gonna I'm gonna drop down there too with all the other links, TikTok, you know, PayPal, all that good stuff. No Twitter yeah. page. I don't have Twitter. No, I have to. I can't do everything, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot. I can't yeah, do yeah. everything. I have to. I have to have some sites off. Off. <laughs> yeah. Save the tweets for the know? one-liner jokes. Yeah. But Jerry, thank you so yeah, much for know. making the time, man, to come on. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Do, you, do you have any upcoming you, shows? Bro. This is going to come out on Sunday. Do you have any shows you want to promote? Uh, just keep checking out. Kill Tony on. YouTube.com slash Kyotone and on Spotify and YouTube. Perfect. Yeah, keep doing Podcast, that. If you're listening. Yeah, man. yeah hey, if you're you. listening. No problem, dude. And if you're listening on Spotify and iTunes, thank you. Don't forget to share the episode with your friends. Leave a five-star review and a comment. Uh, but for now, I've been your host, Johnny Rogers. And until next time, stay classy. You've been listening to The Johnny Rogers Show. New episodes air every Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.